I'm about to go drink another And beer. welcome to the Board Game no, Styles Podcast. This no, is Gabby. No, no, I have an intro. And Jerry, go with your intro. No, start us over. Welcome to the Board Game Snobs Podcast. Critically harsh reviews with a touch of class. Go. Welcome to the Board Game Stomps Podcast. This is a podcast about board games. This is the 60th, the sexiest, the 60th, the sexiest and episode. Oh, really? Yes, it is. We restarted for that? No. What? <laughs> no. Are we really going to do a fourth Why are you video? talking? Speaking of which, how do you think the unthinkable? How do you think the unthinkable? Mm-hmm. You just don't think about it. With an iceberg. <laughs> oh, unsink. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> That was not. It goes. No, it doesn't go. You were twisting your words. No, it tongue. I wasn't. T- that was not a tongue twister. That was just a slip if of the you tongue. Say so. Says the man who came up with some cheesy joke. Why are you talking? You're not even supposed to be here. I, I could attack. You're not even supposed to be. That's what these You're were not the even, rules. No, that's not the rules. What do you mean? Hey, hey, can we just get along? No. Here's just the deal. Here's for the, the deal. listeners that were actually really good friends. This is a podcast about board games, but occasionally we do banter for too long about things, pop culture, m- movies, videos, yeah, TV, yeah, yeah. that nature. Though. Follow us on Instagram. Please follow us on Instagram. Or don't. I don't care. Twitter, Facebook, okay, we really yes. don't do anything about it. But you know what would be helpful? Why don't you post something on Reddit? I accidentally got kicked off Reddit once again. Again? Again. What do you mean again? I'm just, do. Second time. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not. What do you do on there? I'm not Reddit friendly. Uh, hey, guys. Check you, us you're out. You're never friendly at all. Why are you still talking? <laughs> Why did they? Why did they kick you off for real? They, uh, I don't know. They ask questions. I give answers. They don't like my answers. Like, we don't like the cut of your jib, sir. <laughs> what is a jib? Besides the tail end of a ship, isn't it giblets? Aren't giblets something? Uh, n- they are, but I don't they're know like what they like are. Gizzards, like right next to the gizzard. <laughs> <laughs> no, a jib is a is a part of a sailboat, isn't it? It's like the back the back uh, part sail that like. Yes, I'm pretty exactly. sure. Pretty sure it is. Uh, anyways, is, where's your intro? Is that your intro? You derailed my intro. <laughs> I did not. You, you derailed, derailed your derailed own intro. My intro, and okay. Enrique messed it up. We started again. As you and welcome. Look, look, look what I'm looking at right now. Did you just see what I saw? He's, the he. All right, uh, his phone is broken. Yes. What do you expect me to do? Huh? Enrique broke his phone. And now Enrique can't t- actually turn his phone on, and I mean just activate the screen without he has to talk to it in a certain way without utilizing a toothpick. So he carries a toothpick taped to his fu- back of his cell phone to s- turn the screen of his cell Where phone you get on. Tape now. from? I just put it in my pocket. You need to get you a new cell phone. Yeah, I know. So and and in this segment too. of stupid things, Enrique has said, "Oh yay!" So today, we all like stupid things. Let me, t- like let me tell you this. What I say. So this segment. That which we will occasionally air in which I repeat things that Enrique has said. Conversations. So Enrique, while t- while talking about somebody's child, their oh, newborn. <laughs> was it breathtaking? No. He, no. He, he asked if they were anti-fascist. <laughs> <laughs> and I paused for a moment to wonder, what did he mean? What does he like? Because Enrique occasionally gets things confused. Okay, he meant anti-vax, anti like anti-vaccines. <laughs> he was one, and I said, "What are you talking about?" He says, "You know, the, has the kid had his shots?" <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's not an appropriate question to ask somebody. Uh, oh, excuse me. What's the child? Are you against the Nazis? <laughs> Anyways, so, yeah, I had to repeat that. So, anyways. Ricky, I like to think we're all anti-fascists here. There you go. Well. Hey. What? Did you see? What are you drinking? Uh, uh, Sheldag. Sheldag? Sheldag from the Isle Islands. Oh. It's nice. It's a little smoking. Mm. What are you drinking? A coffee. Why? From Colombia. Oh, nice. Um, did you see? And I saw this actually a couple of days ago. Juan Valdez. <laughs> Why did he sink that bu- big boat? Which one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, really, I don't know. Valdez. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're it was talking... named after him. It was. He came at it with coffee beans, took it down. Mm-hmm. Oil everywhere. Go ahead with your talk. That's how it goes, right? Go ahead with what I you know history. <laughs> the Exxon? Go ahead. Um, 
the Exxon Valdez. Oh, is what that was his referring. cousin. Yes. Okay, you're you're confusing everybody. Go ahead. I, what said was that I knew what you were talking about. Go ahead. Uh, did you see they're making a Ticket to Ride movie? Yeah. Not, no, no, sorry. Series. A series. A Ticket to Ride TV series. From, uh, okay, it doesn't matter. Propagates teamed up with Asthma Day Entertainment. Apparently they have Asthma Day Entertainment Division now. Mm. They got big things planned, I guess. So a Ticket to Ride the TV series. The Agricola movie. Mm, that's going to be exciting. Actually, Catan's probably going to be under their wing. The iconic board game, which has been played by over 65 million times online and sold over 6 million copies in more than 40 countries. Okay. Respectable. Yeah. Is being adapted for television. In a winner-take-all travel competition in which five teams take the journey of a lifetime as they seek to compete epic challenges and rack up the most miles by air, land, and sea. So it's basically around the world in 80 days. It's Amazing Race. Oh, Amazing Race. Amazing Race. Haven't we seen this already? Yeah. Or they're just renaming Amazing I, Race I, Ticket to Ride? I forgot the Amazing Race. It was so unamazing. It, 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 and uh, I was reading the answers, the, you know, the responses, and they're like, yeah, so... Uh, can't wait to see these trains operate on the land and uh, sea and air. Where, where is Ticket to Ride and Sea and Air? There is a Ticket to Ride land and sea version. There is a Ticket to Ride that... Wrote boats and... Yeah, something like that. I well, can't remember what it is. I didn't mean to kill your joke. But it wasn't... Well, it wasn't my joke. Oh, it wasn't your joke. It, it was somebody somebody's else. comment. I killed some... See, this is why I get kicked off Reddit. I kill other people's <laughs> threads. All right. Speaking Nobody of... Nobody cares about Ticket to Ride, the TV series. If you're looking for solid, if you're looking for solid entertainment, solid entertainment, we here at the Board Game Snobs like to provide people with you know insight into not only board games but in movies and videos and other things for which you could spend your time watching. Oh yeah. Let me read you a synopsis, a brief synopsis of this thrilling television show okay. that I recently watched. It contains the following actors. Okay. Tell me if it sounds good. Drew Barrymore. Andy okay. Garcia. Okay. Jamie Lee Curtis. She's getting kind of old. Jamie Lee, okay. George Lopez. George Lopez. And Cheech Marin. Okay, so it's sounding a little bit dated at this point. A little bit. A little bit. It's an older film. I think it come out in 2000 and... Uh, I think it's 2002. I'll read you... Kiss this. Me. No, I'm no. sorry. It's 2008. It was 2008. Cleo. 2008. Okay, I was, uh, let's say, 2008, I was 31 years old. Okay. Cleo, a diamond-clad, booty-wearing Beverly Hills chihuahua. Booty-wearing? Yes. Yeah, like chihuahua? Enjoys luxurious lifestyle so much she hardly notices Pappy, a hilarious chihuahua who happens to be crazy for Cleo. Well, if it's a chihuahua, I would say it's probably Poppy. It's, what did I say, Pappy? Pappy. <laughs> <laughs> I've been drinking a lot of whiskey lately, like Van Winkle. Like, hola, papi. But when most of the pampered pooch gets lost in Mexico with only a street streetwise German shepherd to help find her. Oh, to help find her what way is... home. Beverly Hills Chihuahua. Oh, my God. I remember that movie. Yes. Yeah, Did you watch an, it? It's a no Not show. Beverly Hills Cop? No. Chihuahua. This Beverly Hills Chihuahua. Ninja? Nope. This is Beverly Hills I would go. Chihuahua. I would watch both of those. This is the one about a talking dog. Yeah, a talking dog. It's basically a, a, a look who's talking it's, chihuahua. It's, it's the look who's talking with chihuahuas. Okay, why are you reading this? It is because on Rotten Tomatoes, some of the reviews have said you want to cringe as the picture begins, but you'll end up quite enjoying it. <laughs> so it's got decent reviews. Ultimately, as enthralling as a low rent Saturday okay. morning cartoon. I've watched some terrible movies in my day, but I have not seen Beverly Hills Chihuahua. Well, the reason I bring this up is that we had somebody write into us a fan mail. Oh, oh no. whose name I will not. I don't like to out our, our listeners on the uh, podcast on the podcast by name. But we'll just call this lady's name Finzi. <laughs> she apparently <laughs> has said that her husband, who we'll call Eric with a K. Okay. Eric apparently went and watched this movie by oh. himself oh, Eric. in the movie theater. Oh, Eric. Oh, no. Why? She Eric? wrote in asking, like, I guess, like, what should she do about this? Were you going through a tough time in your life, Eric? It sounds like he was. You know what? I can't say much. What is the... <laughs> <laughs> Quick question. What's the worst movie you went to the theater and saw by yourself? That's what I had wrote down. So, <laughs> Rike. Unfortunately, I have several. <laughs> no, okay, tell me one. Uh, About maybe two or three years before Beverly Hills Chihuahua came out, maybe I had my finally matured by that time. Matured? Doubtful. Matured. Uh, I think I'm pretty sure I went and seen Shark Boy and Lava Girl. What's that? Exactly. 
It's Shark Boy. Wait a minute, Enrique, are you Shark Boy? Go ahead. Do you know no. Shark Boy and Lava Girl? Yeah, it's a Disney movie. I remember it. It it was a re- it was badly CGI'd. What? How dare you? It, you know it was. They well, had a robot a, a robot face of George Lopez with like, <laughs> again, <laughs> again, there he is again. George the mid two thousands was George Lopez's years. <laughs> yeah, the heyday going on. He was I'm, he was both poorly CGI'd and a villain in some kid show, and also a talking chihuahua. Um. <laughs> Uh, I mix up Shark Boy and Lava Girl with Spy Kids, which I also went to see at theaters by myself. Don't you dare talk bad about Spy Kids. You're going to wind up on a watch <laughs> list. <laughs> <laughs> Just going and watching these kids shows by yourself. Scoot over. I'm watching. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey there, little fella. Scoot over. <laughs> <laughs> Two shows. Two shows, which I went to the movie theater there and saw by myself. First one. And I'm proud of both of them. I Am Legend. I'm proud of both of mine. Because I don't, because I love the book I Am Legend. Yes, yeah, I was very disappointed by the Will Smith adaptation. What? It was okay. Uh, the second one was Man of Steel. Greatly disappointed in that movie, Kevin Costner. Yeah, yeah, starring Kevin Costner. Really? Like, so r- those are the worst two movies you've ever those seen. Well, all, you're just not a big movie goer. I don't anyway. I'm not a big movie goer. But I went to watch Man of Steel to see if it lived up to the other my favorite superhero show of all times. Uh, hold on, hold on. Blank Man. No, my favorite superhero show of all times, starring none other than. Are wait, you ready? wait. Superhero show of all time. Probably the greatest superhero. Matter of fact, this man replaced Superman in the comic books after he died, and his title was The Man of Steel. The Phantom. No, they shortened it later on in years. I don't know. I don't know. Just to be Steel. And he was the first African American, <laughs> first African American superhero of the time in the '60s, I believe, right up there with Black Panther. 1997 oh. starred a movie with none other than Shaquille O'Neal Mm-mm. as Steel. Mm-mm. Huh. Great show. You never seen that? No, I've never seen. You don't it. ever remember it? I, no, oh, I remember it. Oh, it was great. That is maybe the only superhero movie I've never seen. Well, you ha- well, I'm challenging you. They lost me at Shaquille O'Neal. No, Shaquille O'Neal is a fine actor. Was he fantastic? <laughs> he was fantastic. Hey, was it? It, not only had Shaqu- it not only had Shaquille O'Neal in it as a. Are you ready for this? He was he was a weapons he was a he was a weapon scientist. <laughs> he made weapons for the army that were non lethal, and became very upset when the non lethal, much like his jump shot, pretty much. Oh, wow. Also he starring didn't. in this show. Was none other whose name I can't remember. Hang on, give me a second. IMDb, Roundtree, the guy who played Shaft. Shaft was in Richard? this. Richard. Richard Roundtree. Wow. And Shaquille O'Neal. That's all you should know. That's- so okay, still is he's like a clone of Superman, right? Yeah, or something of that nature. So that is my challenge to you, Gobby, mm-hmm. and to Watch Eric. Watch Steel. You have to watch Steel. It's two dollars on YouTube. You can still buy it. You can buy it on YouTube movies. Watch it. It's only ninety minutes, but it's the best ninety minutes of your life. So out of Beverly Hills Chihuahua, Shark Boy and Lava Girl, Steel, Spy Kids, and Steel. Which would you say is the worst? Oh, Beverly Hills Chihuahua, no doubt. Mm, sorry, Eric. Uh, there's another show. I must admit, I went insane, and I was approximately twenty-two years old and married. Agent Cody Banks. Uh, Frankie, Frankie Muniz. Muniz? Yes. Mm. At the height of his didn't power. That, didn't that have like, uh, didn't that have like the. Uh, I think it had a sequel. It had the blonde girl in it. Uh, well, that narrows it down. Hannah Montana. Miley Cyrus? Wasn't it? Who, who was in it? Oh, she would have been like 10 years oh, old. Oh, there's somebody in that show. I can't remember. Go ahead. No, I don't. Oh, wait. Mm. Was it another Disney girl? It was Maybe another Disney other, girl. Who I knows? don't remember. I don't remember. I don't have it on, up in front of me. But Eric. Beverly Hills Chihuahua. It's pretty bad. That's pretty bad, man. It's pretty bad, man. It's pretty bad. What have you? Okay, confess. What have you seen since then, Eric? By yourself? I've seen a lot of movies by myself because I went through a stage where I love. I, I I don't go to the movies as often as I used to. I love going to the movies, but now, depending on the type of movie, yeah, I kind of don't go by myself because. I- I don't want to be old creeper dude. Nah, yeah. Once you once you get over twenty five, you can't go to movies. By I yourself don't know that I can go watch just, Toy Story four by myself. I have two small children, so I can go. We're going to go see Lion King. Okay, can I go with you? No. <laughs> uh, 
Speaking of which, some another fan sent me an email telling me that I should rewatch uh, Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull because I apparently bad mouthed it or somebody bad mouthed it. Wait, um, who said that? What? Who said we need to rewatch Crystal Skull? Somebody sent us an email saying that if you watch it, not thinking that it's Indiana no. Jones movie, no. I, no. I rewatched it. No, I rewatched it. It is still terrible. It's still just as <laughs> I, bad. I stand by ground. Just the swing on Vine scene alone. Forget the fact he survives nuclear attack in a refrigerator. It was a lead line refrigerator. Oh, well, that changes everything. everything. No, no. It was bad. No to Crystal it Skull. Was bad. It was the writing and the CGI of it all. It was terrible. And Shia LaBeouf being mm. like. What his name like? Slick or yeah, as mud, Greek mud, as mud. mud. Yeah, like yeah. come on. I love Shia, but not in that role. That was terrible. That was bad. So no, sorry. We tried it again. Okay. It didn't work. Oh, and I also started watching the Orville, and it's great. Thank you. Oh, it's awesome. Okay, so as as of as of right now, we're like going to record this and pretty much post it as soon as possible. Stranger Things comes out at midnight tonight. Wow. So by the time this airs, it should be that. Of course, when they can let them. But, uh, I'm ready for Stranger Things Season 3. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. So the critics say. I have not. Do you believe, Do you, Do you? you pay attention to critics? I don't. <laughs> Who does? I am a critic. Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, do you like look at Rotten? Do you like say, oh, well, it's getting pretty good reviews. No. I, you I, say that to me all the time. I say that. I, I started looking at critics because you always talk about critics. Okay. Well, and I have to well. be able to say to you in rebuff, like, this show's getting bad reviews. It's getting good reviews. Well, I mean, it's not the end all be all. But like, if the vast majority of people say something good, more name than one show that got bad critical reviews that you still enjoyed that you thought was awesome. Show or movie Anything. or oh, there's been lots of movies. Well, uh, I know that you have no taste in movies. How dare you slap you. Avengers on it and you'll watch it. Well, Avengers gets rave reviews know, from every good, critic because they're good quality movies. But yet you haven't watched Steel. <laughs> No, like uh, generally comedies, like if comedies get bad reviews, I don't pay attention because most critics don't like to laugh. Hmm. You know, they're just trying to be funny. I don't like to laugh. I know you don't. But you make me laugh and that's that's all all that counts. counts. Speaking about movies and shows is exactly the type of board game that we're about to talk about. There you go. The networks. You are very good with segues. That was a hard merge. That wasn't even really a hard merge. No, that was a smooth Uh, merge. Patent pending. The networks. It, which is a game by Formal Ferret Games, and who is it? Hova. Hova. Glenn Gil Hova. Hova. Gil Hova is the designer. Um, the Networks is about exactly what it sounds like. It's about a television network, which you are running. And each player is controlling its own television network, and you're handling the lineup. You have three time slots, an 8 o'clock, a 9 o'clock, and a 10 o'clock. And you're trying to put a show in each one of those time slots. There's all the different genres of shows that are very common on television, sports, sci-fi, reality TV, that, that type of thing. And the game is basically very similar to an engine building game. Whereas during your turn, you're going to draft from various cards out in the middle of the table. And those t- cards are either shows or actors to place on those shows or ads or various things of that nature. So you're drafting these shows, placing them in their time slots, and it's giving you a certain amount of viewership each time. Uh, you attach certain actors to shows, which will give you more viewers, and then you can attach ads to shows that help, of course, pay for them. And so this goes around for several rounds where you're buying shows and sometimes having replaced shows. And it's very thematic. When you replace a show, you put it over into the other side of your board and it becomes a rerun. So you still get some uh, some viewership of it, but not a lot. But the whole point of the game is to see how many viewers you can get uh, by the end of the game in the rounds. Uh, excellent game. Matter of fact, we had this on our shelf, played it two years ago, wasn't it like April 2017? Yeah. April 2017, we played this game the last time, according to our records. Played it, loved it, forgot completely about it. Put it up on our shelves, talked about it, but then never thought well, to play it again. We didn't forget about it, we just got so much other stuff. This is true. This is true. It's a much better Imperial Settlers. Uh, what makes you think it's Imperial Settlers? Because of the board? The way the, that the cards the come the to one side? The way the move from the side to side, uh, the card, just gaining the cards and assigning them to a certain location, a time slot, 
or I don't know, just something about the card movement reminds me of Imperial Settlers. I will say it does it does set up about it that there the types of cards that are in the game, which I brought out were the ad cards that give you money, the actors the actors which you can attach on to the shows and the various shows. There's also another type of card which I think almost breaks the game. As a matter of fact, I like house rule it that we don't play with it, which are the network cards. And the network cards are basically these one time bonuses that add something to the game. And I don't like them because you just, you just, you don't have to pay for them. You just select it. Instead of, instead of buying a show, you have to manage your money to buy a show. You have to manage your money to, to attach certain ads or actresses onto shows. But with the network card, you just pick it up and it's yours and you use it. To me, I think it kind of wrecks the game. And like, well, what do they do? They give you like bonuses or something, they, right? They give you a one time, one time power. And I just don't like them. Is that because I beat you with one the first time we played? Yes, yes, that. You don't I, like I, that. I remember I stuff you, like that. You tend to not like games I beat you at. It's also a very good solo. It has actually a really decent solo uh, play to it, where you're using the network cards. Like I said, you're on your turn. You're selecting a card out in the middle of the tableau. In the solo version of the game, you just flip over a card and it tells you which cards to remove. And so it's like it's simulating another player. And so that's interesting because it's it's pulling cards and you're not you don't just have free reign of drafting the cards. Well, it that simulates you want. a player even at two players. Yeah, and, and on the two the game is better at three or four players. At two players, you still do that. You still flip over a network card and it will tell you which cards to remove uh, during that player's turn. Uh, the autumn of player, which the, it's nice. I mean, it tightens the game up. The names of the shows are somewhat humorous. That was what I was going to get onto. The art. In the game is very interesting, and they went out to make puns of all the shows. It's good, and it's actually good. good. And the actors and the actresses. It doesn't have the actors or the actresses' name on there. It's just something generic. But you can tell who the who you're talking about. You know who it is. You know who it is. Uh, And some of the the, all the names of the shows are like very tongue in cheek, and that you some of them you have to sit there like uh, a thirty one paper. Yes, the comedy thirty one paper Gobby. That was Gobby's show that he bought and put in and put in his time slot. And I'm sitting there looking at it, thinking, "What show is that?" And finally, after I sat there and kept saying, "I have no clue what show they're referencing," Gobby looks at me and says, "It's Thirty Rock. It's Thirty Rock. Remember yeah. the comedy's like, oh yeah." There was uh, one like the Cubicle. Yeah, mine was Dexterous. The the <laughs> the, the Dexter the yeah. serial killer with, with you. They're uh, good. It's witty. They, they're, they, it is. It's very humorous. It's very humorous. I like it. Anytime it, I sound, I say something's very humorous. It doesn't sound like it's very humorous. <laughs> I'm just gonna that's say that's very humorous. That's that's funny. funny. That's funny. I like the fact that like, and I can't remember. It seems like with the uh, reality shows, they start off with big numbers and decline. I think maybe it's the drama type shows that, or maybe it's the comedies but one of them is real to life like it takes a while for this show to gain traction so like season two might actually have more viewers than season one right and then from there it declines and it's just very realistic as far as a game can be about these shows and so like and after so many years well you're going to start losing viewers well you might want to put that in reruns and so with the rerun uh amount of people which is usually pretty low it'll have like a two or a three on it well, that might be better than letting the show get too old. So you can just replace that show, buy a new show, put the old one in reruns, and then the new show combined with the reruns might equal what a good show would be. And just, it's a numbers game. So you're sitting there and you're looking and you got to get stuff while it's hot and it's new and it's got a good actress in it or a good ad or something. And then it just, I don't know. It's, it's a, it's very thematic to me. Uh, you, you brought up the best part of the game, and probably the the best thing about it that's really inventive is that each show that you have, it has four little seasons on it to show that if you let this show go on the first season, second season, third season, how many viewers you'll get. And like you said, there are some shows that start off that have a bunch of viewers to it and then degrade quickly. And certain shows do better if they're put in certain time slots. So, like, this one show yeah, does yeah. better at 10 o'clock. This one does better yeah, at 9 o'clock. very thematic. And then there's some shows that require an ad or an actress on them. So you can't just slap ads and actresses onto every show that has to either have a slot for them. And so there might be a show that 
doesn't have that many viewers, but will let you put two or three ads or two ads on, on the show and thus make a lot of money off that show each round. So you're yeah. suffering, not getting victory points, but you're getting money. And money in this game was very tight. Yeah, it's... Uh, but I, I, I did surprisingly well with money. You beat me, but it was still a close game. But I going along with the theme... Again, I don't know why I'm comparing it to Imperial Settlers. For some reason, it reminds me of Imperial Settlers. Imperial Settlers is just a card drafting game. It's fun. I enjoy it very much. I enjoy it solo. Networks, I would play Networks over Imperial Settlers, even if it, you might consider it two different styles of game, whatever. If I had the option, hey, you want to play on Networks? You want to play this? I'm going to go with the Networks because it's thematic. I love the theme of it, and I love the actions you take when to put something into reruns and it's good. It's really good. I like it. It plays one to five players and it's, it's to me, like I said, I'm done with 50 first states and I'm done with oh, Imperial Settlers. First states was terrible. The last time we played. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't. I'm, I've, you know what I find interesting? I find it interesting. The first time we played that, we both liked it. You really liked it and you liked it more than Imperial Settlers. The second time we played it, we pretty much both we stopped it. We didn't even yeah. finish the first round. Yeah. So that's just a progression of... It didn't last well into its fourth season. <laughs> oh, no. It was... It's, yeah. There's some games you can play once and you like, and it might be a little while and you break it out again. You're like, and the network stood that test of time. We had played networks in our infancy of gaming and friendship, perhaps. No. Actually, it's only been a couple years ago. I've been here for... Since 2014. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. So anyway... But we broke it out two years later. Still a very, very enjoyable game. Yeah, and I think that if you are a fan of Imperial Settlers or 51st States, then you definitely need to look into the networks. If you're a solo player, um, of course, there's just not that many good solo games out that, are just, uh, that aren't war games or, or just light games like abstract games. The networks is a very good solo game. What else does what else has Gilhova made? Uh, I don't know. I'm looking on here. Book of Dragons. Never heard of it. Battle Merchants. Never heard of it. Bad Medicine. Uh, I've heard of that one. Uh, he just had one come out that was just kickstarted. Uh, came this close to kickstarting. High Rise. Oh yeah, I looked at that. I'm interested because I like the networks. That's really all I have to base that off of, but. I'll give it a try. And hey, what's getting kickstarted that we were big on? Somebody just sent us an email. I can't remember what it was. Stockpile. Stockpile. I love, love Stockpile. It's good. No, it's better than good. Uh, the Kickstarter okay. just ended. There was another expansion for it. Everybody, I'm not going to talk about Stockpile because this is going to be a short episode because we've got to get off here. But Stockpile. Got to get ready for Stranger Things Season 3. Stockpile is one of the... It's very good. It's probably, it is the best stock game. Bidding and stock. Stocking. Stocks. Now, now this makes me recap. Night Stockings. No. Remember that show? No. What? what? Did I say? Who? Night Stockings? Night Stockings. <laughs> you remember the days of USA Network? <laughs> stock. <laughs> Please. Night Stockings was one Night of those shows. Night Stockings? Oh. I never heard of it. Night Stockings? It was, yeah, continue on. Night Stockings. I never uh, heard of that show. I like Burn Notice. I don't know. This Night Stockings was like in the 90s. Oh, I don't remember. It anything. was like a sexy detective show. Night Stockings. Yes. And because Stockings was like, you know, stockings that a woman would wear, but it was more like stockings, like they're stalking you. Oh. That sounds that's like highly a, disturbing. That's it's a so very disturbing very pun. Who re- yeah. greenlit that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a terrible, terrible idea it for sure. It aired like, uh, it aired about the same time as The Hitcher. There was a Hitcher TV series. Oh, man. There was a Hitcher movie no. where like, the guy like hitchhikes and kills people. No. It was a TV show. Right. There are just some shit things that don't age well. You know, no, you know what another one, one is? Pretty much anything off of the, off of the USA Network. USA Up All Night? You remember that? Yes. Okay, it was that same era. Here's one that didn't age well either, but they're trying to bring it back. Tra- oh, what? I'm so wrong. What? I'm so wrong. <laughs> okay, that's why I didn't really... Silk stalkings. But stalking <laughs> is the stalking, like you're stalking somebody. See, that's still... Silk <laughs> stalkings. <laughs> that, that's just disturbing. Uh, yes. Charlie's Angels is coming back. Oh, well, and it, 
No, it doesn't. Okay. No, it doesn't. It looks terrible. <laughs> I, okay. I like Kristen Stewart. Yeah, off Twilight, the, the, the I actress. She has made like nothing but independent movies, and I've I think never, she's grown as an actress. I have, I have not seen one thing she's ever been Me in. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie's Angels. She does that. She has some Rob, facial expression. Rob Estes. Rob Estes was in Silk Stockings. Never heard of him. Let me look at him. Nope. Still don't know him. He needs to shave. Uh, I don't know that he's acted since. He's had that, <laughs> he's had that same five o'clock shadow since ninety four. Mitzi Capture. Didn't know okay. her. Mitzi Capture. Mitzi. That is a real name. That is her name. Oh. Uh, Silk Stockings. Right. R.I.P. That okay, but stockpile. <laughs> Stockpile? Stockpile. Stockpile, okay. Is one of, if it's the best. And the, the, the company's Navu Games. Yeah. Um, Stockpile is very expensive if you try to buy it right now because it's like there's nothing out there. There's no. Uh, it's OOP. It's way out of print. But they just did, they just completed the Kickstarter for its expansion. And so there you go. chances are, be but on you the, could also get the game. Be but on the lookout because I'm sure there'll be retail copies of Stockpile come up. If for some reason you happen to come across Stockpile, buy it. Just buy it. Jerry's very high on Stockpile. I enjoy it, but Jerry's all about I it. I love Stockpile. Love it. It's a good game. I, I We'll agree. talk about it in another episode. All right. When Until we talk about then. our favorite stock ga- stock shows. I've already shown mine. I was talking about stocks like, like you know. Oh, like Wall Street? Like Wall Street. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Until next week. Enrique's here. Yeah. Enrique, oh. quite all of a sudden. Yeah. That's yes. good. I, all I, right. I, Until next time. Good. <laughs> it's good. It's nice. I'm Gabby. This is Jerry. This is Don't let Nuggets go ahead. Eh, whatever. <laughs> Bye. Thank you for listening to the Board Game Snobs. Stay classy.